Welcome to another edition of the Dateline Downtown Podcast. This is your host, Juan Hernandez. I hope you guys are enjoying the new format that I'm experimenting with. Hopefully, it's <laughs> it's gone pretty good. Today's guest is, you know, we've had a lot of, I've had a lot of friends on here on this podcast already, and people might be thinking out there, well, this guy's just bringing on his friends as guests. He must not have that many guests lined up. So... But that's not the case. I mean, we have a lot of guests. We always have a lot of guests lined up, at least to my knowledge. <laughs> so today's guest is a friend of mine. that I've been friends with her for maybe 10 years. Way, like to, make, an, way to make me sound old. Thanks. <laughs> oh, way to make me sound old. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> been maybe, what, 10 years on and off. Like I was telling a previous guest. She's also been friend. I've also been friends with her for about ten years, on and off. And it's like, man, on and off. That's like a weird relationship. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, we've broken up, but we're <laughs> back together. But without further ado, I'd like to introduce Nancy Lemus to the show. Nancy, welcome to the show. Hi, thank you for having me. <laughs> Nancy, uh, we went. We both went to Edison Middle School together and Austin High School. Yeah, we did. And Go Rangers and Mustangs. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> And we've ventured off after graduation. You know, I came to UHD and you ventured off to UT, correct? Mm-hmm. What are you, what are you majoring in right now in, at UT? Uh, I major uh, in radio, television, and film with a, like, specification in uh, production design. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, movies and stuff. Oh, Okay. <laughs> I should probably ask, like, specifically what it what it is that that you do over there. Yeah, exactly. It's a it's a ge- it's a really general major, and you can kind of focus on whatever you want to focus on. So people go in there wanting to direct, wanting to write or produce, and kind of anything that uh, corresponds to movie making. Mm-hmm. Um, and I I went in not necessarily knowing what I wanted to do. I I actually wanted to do broadcast journalism which is tv and correspondence work and like Mm -hmm. news newsroom kind of things Mm -hmm. um but i i took a lot of filmmaking classes and i i really fell in love with it and it wasn't until like maybe a year and a half ago two years that i started doing um art department production design kind of work Mm -hmm. and i really like it so it's it's like the the building of the sets, the decorating of the sets, mm. the props and stuff mm-hmm. like that. So. so it wasn't originally something that you were interested in going in, right? No, not no. at all. I didn't even know it existed, I guess. Like, oh, okay. that's... Well, I can't, I mean, I guess I assumed it existed, but, like, f- when you're watching a movie, it's a very passive experience. You're kind of just accepting as an audience member what you're being presented. Mm-hmm. So I, that was my experience at that point was just kind of anything that was shown to me was just what was made mm-hmm. it wasn't until i got into school that i i was more aware to more aware of what was going on behind the scenes and that's kind of where i fell into place and i really really liked it i tried some other stuff i tried documentary and i still love documentary i still love journalism and like stuff like that but i right now i'm thinking production design mm, hopefully okay. it works out i like it a lot now is that something that you've enjoyed doing since you started like i mean obviously i can tell based on everything that that you put on social media and stuff like that yeah i like it i like it a lot it's it's really hands-on um i've i've i like i don't have very much experience building so like the Mm -hmm. building of sets and constructing of set i'm still very very naive in but i like uh, r- right now, what I'm telling people that I am, because you have to tell people that you are things mm. and to in order to become them is something that I was told. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm telling people that I am a set decorator and I have set decorated and I like that a lot. So the shopping, the um, I like going out and buying things and like uh, having a relationship with the director and kind of getting to know the story and aesthetically, like visually and aesthetically putting together the pieces that make up the characters that they wrote. Mm-hmm. So you're there from the very ways. beginning? Um, or sometimes. Okay. Sometimes I'm not. Sometimes so I'm picked up later. depends on the project? Yeah sometimes, uh-huh. yeah, sometimes it depends on the project. If the project's small, I might not need very many people. And uh-huh. 
one person can do multiple jobs. If the project is bigger, you kind of need more people. And uh, it really doesn't depend on me. It kind of depends on the producers because they're the ones that gather the crew. Mm, okay. So I'm at the mercy of okay. really good producers. <laughs> See, I've always been in the last couple of years, uh, I started getting into film a lot. And very since I'm a very curious person, I'm sure a lot of people know that already by now. I just I like you know I like I like to know how things got to a certain point. You know I'm reading I'm right now I'm currently reading still reading Arnold Schwarzenegger's biography. Oh, he talks a lot how's about that? <laughs> um the first movie he talks about no wait not the first movie. He when he starts talking about Conan the Barbarian, he talks about everything that uh-huh. that he had to do as far as where they filmed it, uh, just a lot of things that he had to learn as far as like Taking acting classes, yeah. uh, language classes. Um, they taught him how to wield a sword, how to ride a horse. You know, yeah. just a lot of things. And the actor's process is is just as much, if not more, rigorous than mm-hmm. any of the crew members, to be honest. And he also talks about he also talks about the director's role and mm-hmm. you know just the amount of time that it takes to yeah get everything together. And that's like once the story's made and like the script is locked mm-hmm. before that it's years like i don't know if you watch a lot of directors commentaries or if you are like um are aware of when people talk about how long they've been writing something mm-hmm. but stuff I, is I in do the that vault with, for uh, decades sometimes. i do that with uh mainly like if i'm watching like a like a box set for like music or something mm-hmm. i usually put on like commentary yeah for movies i don't think i've I don't think I've really done it. I'd rather watch like interviews yeah. of the actors. It's probably the same with records. Mm-hmm. Um, Chinese democracy. Like, how long were people waiting for that? That was maybe. I don't. I don't think I ever ever even listened to the album though. I talked about this on a <laughs> on a previous podcast with a a guest that I had on, mm-hmm. and I mentioned that to him, and he said that it just uh, in that in that case it just depends on on the artist. Yeah. Well, yeah, you based want your stuff on, to be, like, pristine and perfect. Yeah, and, you know, based on the type of person that Axel Rose is, he's very, he's a perfectionist mm-hmm. type of person. So it took that long to do what, I guess, what he considered to be epic. Yeah. And the only downside was that he did not promote it properly. Yeah. Even though it charted pretty good. Yeah. That's probably not his fault, though. That's management. Yeah, yeah. he's like, you know what? I don't want to deal with this. Same thing with a movie. A movie can be amazing, spectacular, best movie ever. Mm-hmm. And if and if nobody knows that it exists, nobody knows if it exists, you know? And that's not particularly the writer or the director's fault. It's mm-hmm. whoever's in charge of that. Mm-hmm. And people pay millions and millions and millions of dollars oh, for yeah. departments like that. It's crazy. Yeah. And you're currently... You're currently living right now in Los Angeles, right? Um, I just or moved back. You just moved. I just moved back from uh, from LA. I was there for three months, four months, mm-hmm. something like that. Um, and I lived there for a little bit. It was still with um, UT. Uh, I go to uh, the University of Texas in Austin, and they have a program named UTLA, mm-hmm. and you do um, a semester in LA while still taking classes, and you. Mm. It's kind of like you take three classes and then your fourth class credit is 150 hours at an internship of your Mm -hmm. choice and that you get (laughs) or that you, yeah, that you Mm -hmm. apply for and you get. So that's what I did. It was really fun. How's the experience like living in Los Angeles? I mean, people like myself and I don't know if any other people have ever been to L.A. that Mm -hmm. have never been, you always hear about what you see on TV and what you hear about on the newspaper, you know. It's nothing but games and totals. No, I'm kidding. Uh, (laughs) You hear about Hollywood and this, especially when it comes to something like uh, film. Yeah, where it's like that's where the industry is Mm -hmm. at. Right. Um, I liked it. I liked it a lot. I actually didn't, my, the internship that I had over there wasn't film specific. Mm -hmm. It was, it was related to film, but it was, my actual job title was a social media um, intern. Mm -hmm. So I was I was handling that, um, and I I liked that. I liked stepping away from film a little bit and mm-hmm. being able to watch movies and appreciate them for the works that they are while doing something else and kind of just knowing what the industry has to provide as far as job like entry level jobs. Mm-hmm. Um, as far as the city goes, this is what my intent was with going over there was um, to see whether or not I liked LA as a city mm-hmm. um, because as when 
you're like a 20 something that's really important to you is liking where you live mm. and and liking what you do so I, I already know that I like what I do so I want to like where I live because mm-hmm. Austin is also um, I love a Austin. very a very film centric world mm-hmm. as far as industry Houston not that much like Atlanta yes you mm-hmm. know there's some places that are and there's some places that that aren't so I obviously need want to be in a place that is mm-hmm. so going to LA my only I guess expectation was to make a decision of whether or not I like the city what mm-hmm. like no matter what because stuff can always be crazy um and very expectedly it was crazy and uh, luckily I do I really do like the city I liked mm-hmm. it a lot um it's different the traffic is awful <laughs> mm-hmm. I can say that the traffic is awful um the people that I met specifically were really great like the only there a lot of the things that I've I've heard from people that go and move to LA I guess they also stay they run into a lot of what they say is and I'm doing air quotes right now is like fake people mm-hmm. and I did I did come across that but thankfully um because of like my internship and the people that I surrounded myself that I chose to surround myself um with I didn't run a- across that very much mm-hmm. so you have to like actively not do that but I think it would be harder if if and when I go back um to not to stay away from the fake people because it, there's an industry built around mm-hmm. pretending so yeah especially in a place like LA you hear about people all the time saying oh I got an audition for for <laughs> I guess Saturday Night Live or whatever show yeah or I wrote for this show it's like yeah, great what else a, do you do yeah there's <laughs> a lot of people that I mean they I mean everybody there mm-hmm. is, is not necessarily from there and right they want like if they're working at the mall they want to be somewhere else you know Mm -hmm. and that's very evident that's one thing that i did notice they they don't necessarily want to be exactly where they're at or they're they're the place where they're at is just temporary Mm -hmm. that's a vibe that i got a lot there it's just like i'm only here until this thing pans out and i'm also doing this and i'm also doing this Mm -hmm. which is a nice it's it's really nice it's Mm -hmm. really nice because it lets you know that people are multi-dimensional mm-hmm. and have the ability to do other stuff it's yeah, not, not very just simple. one thing not just a nine instead to five of, yeah just or instead of just going there just to be famous or mm-hmm. which is not gonna if you're in like like in music if you're in it to be become rich or famous and just choose something else choose something else or it's gonna take a while it's gonna take a <laughs> while or it's not gonna work out in the end so you yeah. still got bills to pay you still got to yeah. pay the rent feed the dog whatever you have to do <laughs> yeah feed the dog always feed the dog yeah i liked it though it was really fun would you know. go would you go back to to live there yeah definitely yeah. um i would go back i just want to try like i just want to try austin without being a student mm-hmm. like and see how job how jobs go and mm-hmm. like whether getting jobs is difficult or not i just feel that in austin i have a better network of people Mm -hmm. than I do in LA because it's harder to meet and make an impression on people in LA because they've they constantly are meeting people that's Mm -hmm. what they're there for that's probably why they moved to LA Mm -hmm. um so I kind of just want to give Austin a try without being a student and I'm I'm, honestly I'm not giving myself very much of a time limit if I like it I'll stay Mm -hmm. but I'm giving myself like three to five years and also to save money to be lying not Mm -hmm. To not to lie, just to save money, because gas is expensive in LA and oh, everything else. Yes, coming back to Texas and seeing the gas prices, it was like, I was like, I'm and home. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, thank God, thank all the gods for these gas prices, because it was amazing. Yeah, um, yeah, it's expensive living in LA. I'm, it's really expensive, and I was only there for like three, four months. Wow. Yeah. And this is just like in an apartment or? Yeah. Um, because I was there with a school program. They like you pay a program fee and you pay um, a ho- it's kind of just like coming to college. You mm-hmm. pay a program fee, which is like a tuition kind of thing. And then you pay. That's a lie. You pay your tuition, you pay your program fee and then you pay a housing fee. Wow. Yeah. And everything else is kind of like expenses. So like gas and food and all while going to school at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. There were full days they're full and also like um what's a good thing about the program is like you can choose your internship so the internship that I was at 
um, they knew I was a student, so they were really lenient about mm -hmm. like the time I went in and the, having enough time to go back. And I strategically chose something that was not in Santa Monica when my school was like in Burbank, mm -hmm. like an hour and a half. Some people had like two hour commutes every day. It was nuts. Wow. Yeah, I don't know why they did that to themselves. Would you ever consider, um, I guess, branching off into something like acting or? I cannot be in front of the camera because no. my lip starts twitching and my eye starts twitching. No joke, this has happened since like I was in elementary school and we would take like school pictures. Mm -hmm. It was bad. Like my eye would just start shaking and my lip would start shaking. And that kind of still happens when I get in front of the camera now. The only time it doesn't happen is when I'm doing like YouTube videos mm. because it's very like singular a singular experience just like me and my camera mm -hmm. and i'm just like being stupid but um it always happens otherwise oh. like always i i get really nervous in front of cameras um i would like i've been thinking about stuff that i can do because like i said most people nowadays in order to make ends meet have to do more than one thing mm -hmm. um you i was thinking about maybe like interior design maybe like set decorating for photo shoots um mm -hmm. set decorating for plays um it can't be that different is what i'm saying that's also the thing that la helped me with was just to realize that i can branch out oh, okay. so i'm looking forward i'm looking forward to having or like having that realization and being back in austin and being like what can i do with this on a smaller scale mm -hmm. on an austin okay. scale austin scale yeah austin's been growing for the past maybe past decade last couple of years but yeah. the times i've been there it's amazing yeah it's grown a lot just in the in the years that i've been there mm -hmm. which is i got there in 2010 summer of 2010 well, yeah what am i talking about seems, you've lived there yeah it just <laughs> seems like a lot more people and it seems like a lot more coming from just construction who just visits like every other i've yeah. only been there maybe like two times <laughs> yeah it's really so. fun though i love that city you need to let me know when you're in town so we can hang out yeah, well, we have. Yeah, more. <laughs> but again, most times you're usually busy. Mm -hmm. You're usually busy with school, and I'm like, I don't yeah. want to mess with. I'm that, doing. So. I'm doing half time school, so I might have a job, but I can quit <laughs> if you're in town. Whatever, it's a job. I'm like I'll quit. <laughs> I'll see you next time. <laughs> yeah. Isn't um I forget the guy's name. Isn't Robert Rodriguez based out of there? Yes, I um. Yes, he is. He has his production company down there. And mm -hmm. I don't know. I finally watched El Rey, which is his new... Um, the new network that he the has? The new network, yeah. Mm -hmm. I finally watched it, and there was like this um, director's chair show that he has. Um, and he was interviewing Quentin Tarantino. It was like the best thing ever mm -hmm. for like an hour and a half. Um, yeah, yeah, he's based out of there. Mm -hmm. And he's had... Um, I think he did a movie recently named Two Scoops, where it was a like an interactive auditioning experience so you can mm -hmm. send in a video audition and you can have a chance of being in the movie which i thought mm -hmm. was really really cool and he graduated from ut too so oh did that's he cool. yeah. i did not know that he's one of the prized i've uh prized alumni. i've seen that documentary i've what's it called full tilt boogie on from dust till dawn it talks oh, about I've, the, I've, the, the yeah. making of the movie oh i, it's, I, it's, I think it's like that. maybe like an hour and a half it's pretty long it talks about how yeah, pretty much the whole what we've been talking about, mm -hmm. but how the process of the art, how it starts <laughs> from just it being on paper to actually being mm -hmm. on like a set and everything. Mm -hmm. You see people like George Clooney on there and uh, yeah. Tarantino. That movie is crazy. I I barely watched that movie a few months ago, actually mm -hmm. in L.A., and I had no idea um, the UT, I guess like the building, the UTLA Center had a big collection of DVDs and that was one of them. I was like, I've never seen this movie. Mm -hmm. I had no idea what it was. I just knew it was Robert mm -hmm. Rodriguez. And I was I was pleasantly surprised. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. It's a fun movie. <laughs> no, it's really fun. I, I like a lot of his movies and a lot of Tarantino's movies. Yeah. You can great. go from Reservoir Dogs to Pulp Fiction yeah. to Jackie Brown. Kill Bill. Kill Bill's one Kill of my Bill, favorites. both of them, volumes one and two. Yeah. And even Rodriguez's stuff, even though it might seem a bit hacky for people. I love him. I've it's still very I've still not seen um Sin City and like mm. did, he did Spy Kids, right? Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. haven't seen those. To me it's very entertaining. I like the Desperado. Watching movies like Desperado yeah. and Once Upon a Time in Mexico. Um as Johnny Depp in it. I'm best. missing out a lot of other the yeah. machete <laughs> movies. Oh yeah, yeah. And yeah, it's just, it's just, 
I just like, like when I watch a movie now, it's like, I can tell like, oh yeah, it's his kind of movie or, yeah. or it's that type of person's kind of movie. Like if I see like a movie by, uh, like Tarantino, mm-hmm. you kind of know what to expect already. You see a movie like Jan- Django Unchained or... You know his style. Yeah, It's very yeah. much a Tarantino movie. Mm-hmm. Just like the film language of it. And yeah, he he has... I don't know who his editor is. Because I know he had an editor for a really long time. Like Reservoir Dogs up until Kill Bill 1, I think. And then she might have passed away for some... She, she I think she passed away. And I don't know who his editor is now. Or if he like changes up. Mm-hmm. But like, I know he's very involved in the editing process and like you can tell because it's mm-hmm. it's like his signature i love that mm-hmm. there's nothing worse than somebody who's not completely involved at all yeah and but i mean those movies get made all, made all the time mm-hmm. that's like your rom-coms and stuff <laughs> that's true not a fan <laughs> you but need those yeah, <laughs> yeah you, you need you those need in those. society I mean, people do watch those type of movies yeah I, I like those movies i like um like because i said so and leap year and he's just not that into you. Those are, I think those mm. are great. Yeah, I love some rom coms. Mm-hmm. You need a rom com and ice cream sometimes. <laughs> I think I do because I just sit down and start watching like Schwarzenegger movies yeah. and Stallone movies. And sometimes they're so <laughs> absurd that they're great. Like sometimes really like bad movies mm-hmm. are just really great just because mm-hmm. they're so bad. <laughs> hey, I see I see them all the time. <laughs> that's why. That's like p- why part of me likes reality tv sometimes it's just so bad that it's just mm-hmm. great mm-hmm. i've been hearing a lot of things about trailer park boys do you watch that have you ever seen I, that? I heard about it yeah i hear about it a lot <laughs> yeah i've never i i need to give it a shot but like i like stuff that's on netflix too i don't watch a lot of tv on tv mm-hmm. so i watch a lot of are tv you, on netflix. are you that type of person now because that's how i mean now with jobs and school and everything like that it's I rarely watch TV now. It's just off, and yeah. even even with Netflix, I still, whenever I have the time, I'll just pop on something, mm-hmm. like just to pass just the time. Try, try to catch up on on movies that I may have missed. I'm, yeah, I, I really don't. I don't. I really don't watch TV like shows anymore mm-hmm. on TV. I really don't go to the movies anymore because it's, yeah. it's just so much I've more been, convenient. Yeah, so. I've been really bad at at going to the movies, especially this year. Like being being over there and kind of stuff be, having earlier release dates or just mm-hmm. being aware of the stuff that's in production mm-hmm. um before it comes out i've been really bad at it i've saw i saw some good movies um but as far as like the nominate like the nominees for the oscars and stuff like that because it's award season already mm-hmm. i i've not been good at keeping up mm-hmm. but yeah i don't watch stuff on tv anymore i'll usually watch them like when they announce when they announce the list i'm like oh these are up for like nomination i guess i'll watch i guess yeah. they're good i'll watch them yeah some of them are and i'm still catching up to this day I mean, it's yeah. just so many out there that i haven't seen yeah like the last the last movie that i saw in theaters maybe uh, this is maybe about a year or two ago what yeah it's been that long i want to say too long <laughs> i want to say because I catch several, like, around the same time. It was a Titanic 3D experience. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> that would have been great. I didn't go see that, but that would have been great. There's only... I think there was only a handful that I saw on 3D. Um, I can't do 3D. I have glasses. And then having the glasses on top of the oh, glasses yeah, is yeah. always really annoying. I only did the Avengers on 3D. Mm. That was wor- well worth the 3D. Did you watch um, Guardians of the Galaxy? Mm-mm. Oh, you need to watch that movie. I want it's to. so good. Are you you're like an action movie? Are you like sci fi action? Oh movie? yeah, yeah. I'll yeah. watch uh the other the last movie I just saw last um was it last Friday? Um Edge of Tomorrow with Tom Cruise. I heard that was surprisingly good. It was. I, I don't I don't watch very much like I don't watch action movies in theaters unless mm-hmm. I'm like literally being forced Mm -hmm. um by like someone younger than me or something like that that that's all they we can be into Mm -hmm. um i that was one that i saw the trailer for and i was like this can be good but it's still tom cruise so i'm not gonna see it like i I wouldn't go Mm -hmm. see it by myself or like on a date what's up with that the whole tom cruise thing why do people i I, don't know i I think he's kind of played out i liked his earlier stuff like i loved vanilla sky even though some people give it like 
I don't know. Some people don't like Vanilla Sky, but I loved Vanilla Sky. Um, Top Gun risky, was pretty good. Top Gun, <laughs> Risky Business, like all the like the classics. I don't know. I I ever since he jumped on Oprah's couch, it's kind mm, of left a sour okay, taste in my mouth. He that. went a little freaky. Uh -huh. yeah. And the whole Scientology thing. <laughs> I don't know about that. That teach their own, but uh. <laughs> he went a little psycho on Oprah's couch, and mm -hmm. I don't know. That's why, like, sometimes I don't. I try to like. You think he was just trying to pump it up a little bit? Like. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> definitely. And he was in love. Of course you jump on couches when you're in love. But just did that I don't yesterday. know. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I feel like some people especially in like the act when they're really pigeonholed in their careers uh -huh. can overstay their welcome. Mm. You know? Too long at the party? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you don't want to be a 78-year-old Chuck Norris still trying to do action oh, movies, you know. Yeah. Like Expendables is cool and everything, but <laughs> if you're trying to if you're trying to reach to an audience that isn't exactly an action film buff, mm -hmm. you're gonna be like, why are you still doing this? Right. Why are you still here? And people like them, they just and I love Chuck Norris. Yeah, they just like to work. Like, I haven't seen this this last Expendables. I saw the the first two. Mm -hmm. And it's just like you see you see all these people like Van Damme and Chuck Norris is like man. No. Way past their prime. No. But I loved um, Van Damme's commercial, the Volvo, like, 18-wheeler commercial where oh, he's just yeah, doing the yeah, slit. Yeah. Like, <laughs> oh, that was so great. That was that came out, like, right during finals last year, I think, mm -hmm. in the fall. And I had a moment because I loved Van Damme, like, mm -hmm. classic Van Damme. I don't remember that movie that he was I don't even know. I don't remember the movie. He I don't know if you've ever seen great. that uh, movie Bloodsport. I think it was one of the yeah. first ones that he did. Yeah. Where he fights, like, in some underground. Yeah, thing. and it's, like, to the death or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's what I'm thinking the about. Funny story. The story that the guy the guy that's that they based the story out of, mm -hmm. he's actually one of, the, one of the... One of my relatives actually knows him. Oh, really? Yeah, his name is... Uh, the guy's name that they based off the story off from is Frank... Frank... Uh, what's his name? Frank Ducks. D-U-X. Frank Ducks, no <laughs> and they based the movie off of him, uh -huh. real life, obviously. And he he told me about it that he like actually knows him. Like, That's cool. Considers him a friend, mm -hmm. and I see pictures of him like every now and then on Facebook oh, that's with him. Awesome. And I'm like, he's like, you seen that movie Bloodsport? I'm like, yeah, I've seen it a bunch of times. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's one of my favorite like martial arts movies. And it's just so it's like just so movies. weird how things play out like that yeah it's a freaking small world it really is and it's only getting smaller and like you said you don't want to overstay your welcome especially when it comes to movies or music because and in movies too like i don't know if you noticed the movies like that arnold has done in mm -hmm. the past couple years ever since mm -hmm. he came ever since he finished his run as governor mm -hmm. they still sell pretty good but mm -hmm. it's nowhere near where he was back in the late 80s true lies and, yeah true lies and kindergarten cop yeah i mean Terminator. no like no movies are like that though mm -hmm. like some movies still get like crazy numbers but it's those like tentpole blockbuster movies that have mm -hmm. millions and millions and millions of dollars like worth of marketing mm -hmm. and like nobody could compete mm -hmm. like ninja turtles probably made a shit ton of money and oh yeah nobody really gave two craps about it yeah it's it's no it's no ET I'll tell you that. Yeah, I was actually gonna watch it yesterday and I I luckily didn't. I don't want to watch the new Ninja Turtles. Mm -hmm. And like I was saying too, like as far as shows go, TV's doing great. It's it's doing pretty good as far as shows go. Um, TV's doing great and Netflix like original content yeah. or like online streaming original content's doing really good. Mm -hmm. I can see that growing into like something like hbo in like yeah the next couple years yeah or that's kind of like the place to be at like mm -hmm. orange is the new black so good i just watched um, peaky blinders it's so good where's 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 that one right now is that on netflix season both. two right orange is the uh, new black orange is the new black is yeah okay I'm, there's two seasons out and yeah i'm, I'm barely like on like the third episode of second or third episode of season two so oh it's really good and i finished off Breaking Bad, like, a long time ago. Yeah, Breaking Bad is great. <laughs> uh, Sons of Anarchy, I still haven't seen the, the last season. But I haven't seen that. I kind of know what happens already. Yeah. Mm. Well, that one's over, right? It's like they had their series yeah, finale. Yeah, it's over. But it takes a while for them to put it up. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, I love that um, stuff. There's one out named Marco Polo. That's yeah. Netflix original yeah. content that I I'm sure a watch. lot of people heard about, about that. Yeah. I heard from a friend after I finished Peaky Blinders because I watched Peaky Blinders as soon as I got back from L.A. And yeah. I just kind of had nothing to do for like a week mm -hmm. before I went on set. And I watched it. It was like two seasons, maybe. I could be lying, but like 12 episodes. Mm -hmm. um, and I watched it in like three, four days, three and a half days. Wow. And it was great. It was so good. Wow. Yeah. What's the show called again? Peaky Blinders. Peaky Blinders. I'm yeah. sure I've seen on my list yeah. somewhere. I heard about it a lot over there. But it was really, really mm -hmm. good. I'm on American Horror Story right now. Me Co too, uh, kind of. Coven. Oh, really? I didn't watch yeah. it. That's the only one I didn't watch. I watched the first, the like the haunted house one. I actually went to the haunted house. Oh, did you? Yeah, because it's like not technically Beverly Hills, but like Beverly area. Um, How was that? Yeah, it's cool. It looks exactly the same with mm. like an SUV minivan <laughs> in the driveway. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Um, and there's people driving by mm -hmm. just to go see the house. Um, I've seen the first one. The second one, which was like Asylum or something like that. Yeah. Uh -huh. I didn't see the third one, unfortunately. I saw the first episode, and then I just dropped off. But I've been keeping up with Freak Show, kind of. I'm a few episodes behind, mm -hmm. but it's it's all right. Freak Show's all right. Coven, I heard, is the best one. Yeah, it's be uh, I, I'm barely like on like the third episode right now, mm -hmm. as as we speak. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and to be honest, I've I've I really enjoyed because sometimes it takes it takes a while for me to like warm up to start a show. liking it. Yeah. Kind of like Breaking Bad at first. I'm kind of like, uh, I don't know. But Breaking Bad, like, the first season was kind of slow. Yeah. Kind of like, it was pretty, pretty slow. Especially, like, the first few episodes. Especially because it's just, like, trying to establish mm -hmm. a really complicated character that you, up until the last episode, you kind of don't know if you like him mm -hmm. or you hate him. Did you love him or hate him towards the end? I, I still don't know. <laughs> like, um... And for those who don't who don't know, we're talking about the main character of Breaking, da uh, Breaking, Breaking Bad, Bad, Walter White. Walter yeah, White. he he. Uh, I don't know, and I think I don't know is a sufficient answer because that just goes to show that it's great writing. Mm -hmm. You know, because you like, how long has it been since like maybe like le a little less than a year, but almost mm -hmm. a year since the episode went off the air, and I still haven't worked out the feelings that I have like over Walter White because he's such a complicated character who did such awful awful things but with good intentions mm -hmm. and I, I i don't know i i have a love-hate relationship it's the fact that with they're Walter bad White. that they're bad i think i kind of more hate him mm -hmm. than i like him but he it's just a great it's just such a great show mm -hmm. all the emmys i mean i think we all, all i think we all knew who, people that watched the show we all knew that he was gonna go out that way he was gonna go out but i just didn't know how yeah I and really they did didn't it gracefully. Know. Like, mm -hmm. like as far as I've heard, nobody had some like awful backlash. Mm -hmm. As far as the ending or the series finale, it was like um, fulfilling. Mm. I, I mean, wonder what happened to Jesse. It doesn't matter. <laughs> he's, he's, doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter. He's on to bigger and greater things. His own show, like uh, what's his name? Uh, did you ever watch BoJack Horseman? He did the voice of. No. Like the assistant on BoJack Horseman. That was a Netflix original too, uh -huh. but it's it was like an animated of, series. A lot of originals out there. Yeah, it was. It was a funny show. Mm -hmm. That was a good show. It's like about a horse. That's. It's like a two D animated show about a horse who's like a old like eighties sitcom actor, mm -hmm. and he's trying to like get his life together post success, <laughs> and he's kind of a drunk. It's great. It's awesome. Yeah. No. There's a lot of shows on on my list that I have that I just I haven't gotten around to I I started watching Mad Men like a Never couple got years into ago Mad Men, yeah. and it's to be honest over. I really didn't yeah I really didn't you like don't it. what the fuss is about yeah sometimes it's your taste and sometimes it's not mm -hmm. I I it took me forever to get into Parks and Recreation and mm -hmm. I got in and it's the best thing That's ever pretty funny love it so much I've seen a couple episodes yeah pretty funny um stuff like uh, the other day I played the first episode of House of Cards and that was pretty, I kn I, pretty interesting. I'm in the same boat as you. I've just went through the first episode mm -hmm. and I don't know. I don't know if I didn't like it. I just mm -hmm. didn't make up a, a decision after mm -hmm. watching the first episode and I never continued. Mm -hmm. But that's one of them that I do want to watch. Mm -hmm. Especially because Kevin Spacey's in it. Mm -hmm. and 
I mean, I've, I've seen a lot of stuff that he's done in the past. He's so good. What is it? Um, American Beauty. Best movie. Such really? a good movie. American Beauty. Better yeah. than uh, Seven. <laughs> I haven't seen Seven. Mm. Seven's one of my boyfriend's favorite movies. I saw it the other he day. He loves it. Yeah, he loves it. I, that's on my... Yeah, I haven't seen a lot of movies, mm-hmm. which I think is great because it keeps me ignorant. People are probably wondering, <laughs> man, all, all Juan does is just watch movies now. I'm like, yeah, I'm on yeah. vacation right now. Yeah, I'm on vacation. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I do. I mean, I try to... Because when, when I'm in school, I hardly have the time to watch anything. Yeah. Because my focus is somewhere you else. You have to make... You really have to make time. Um, even during the weekend, like maybe like on a Friday or Saturday, even then, I'll still probably won't see anything. Yeah, I know. I have well, like one thing that I'm. Uh, this should be my New Year's resolution is to try to go see more movies in the theater, like mm. like more independent movies. Cause in Austin, at least, there's there's some good theaters that will give independent movies or mm-hmm. like smaller budget movies um, some screen time, mm-hmm. and it's it's nice. I'm that's my I'm declaring it right here that this is my new. Do you have any any favorites? Any favorite independents that just come off your mind? Uh, oh, that's a difficult question. I love Juno. Juno is mm. great. Um, I loved Hellion, which was uh, one of the professors um, at UT. She directed that. It actually has Aaron Paul in it. Really? Yeah. Wow. That, that was a great movie. I love. Oh, I don't know. There's a lot. I loved um, 13. That's Catherine Hardwick, who mm-hmm. directed the first Twilight movie. Oh, okay. And uh, Never Lords seen of it. Dogtown. <laughs> Lords of Dogtown, she directed. Uh-huh. I love, I love 13. Since I was 13. Um, a lot of movies. Skeleton Twins this year was really good. Mm-hmm. Um, that was with uh, Kristen Wiig and, oh, uh, I forgot his name. I don't know, some dude from Saturday Night Live. That was a really good movie, too. Mm-hmm. Have you seen that movie Henry? No. Portrait of a Serial Killer? Mm-mm. No. It came out maybe like in the late 80s. I just saw it the other day on Netflix. It stars uh, Michael Roker from mm-hmm. Walking Dead. Yeah. The guy that plays Merle. Yeah. It was actually his first first movie. Really? Mm-hmm. Henry. That and it's just, I think it's, it's based off of a true story. I can't remember the full name of the guy. Mm-hmm. But it's just about, it's pretty much about him, him killing, raping and killing women. And it's like, he just goes on about his life. Like, yeah. like nothing. It's like, you watch it, it's pretty. Brutal. I mean, they don't show like scenes where, they show they do show scenes where he actually kills them and everything. But they're not like gory or anything. But just the fact that everything that's going on is, it's, so scary. it's pretty scary. I was kind of like, <laughs> Yeah. But it, it's uh yeah that's another that's a hidden gem that I found the other Henry. day. It's a, there's a lot of movies that I've that I've come across that I, I would have never thought were like mm-hmm. good. I've just seen the seen the cover and it's like incoming phone call from a caller. Yeah, just disregard that. Caller ninety nine point one. We have one. We have a. As you can see, we have a large <laughs> fan base. <Yeah. laughs> How it do only they know? So large that they just telepathically know when we're It only rung maybe two times. But yeah, that was a really good that was a really good movie that I like. And I I like every year on Christmas if I go to Mexico, which is usually mostly every year. Yeah. They always air the whole Rocky series. Oh, right. On cable. On. Yeah. Like the whole day. So I'm just there just watching <laughs> the whole Rocky series the whole day from yeah. Rocky 1 to the last one that he did. Yeah. And it's one of my favorite series. Just the fact that, good. I mean, I love Sylvester Stallone mm-hmm. um, among Arnold and Bruce Willis. And yeah. The big guys. The, yeah, all the top guys. <laughs> but I just love that series. How do you feel? This might be a random question, but how do you feel about Terry Crews just in general? He's a, <laughs> I like him. He, he gets a lot of... He gets a lot of good roles every now and then. Yeah. Um, he kind of freaks me out. I'm not going to lie. Really? Ever since, yeah. Just, like, as a person. Because, like, I don't know how to feel about him. Like, he's accessible. Like, Terry Crews did um, Everybody Hates Chris, right? He's mm-hmm. dad. He's so accessible in things like that. But he's just, like, this massive 
guy. Just like so muscular. I don't know. I, I would was, get confused. Emotions. I was just watching Training Day the other day, <laughs> mm-hmm. and he's in it. He comes out in it, but he doesn't say anything. He's just like he's just there. He's he plays a, a, a thug. <laughs> I'm like, and I I didn't remember that he was in the movie. I was like, oh hey, that that's what's his name. Yeah, <laughs> Terry Crews. Yeah, that's have, another really good movie. I have mixed emotions about Terry Crews. So, in the beginning of the podcast thing, you said something about a new format. Mm-hmm. What are you thinking about? For What are you thinking about? Well, the new format that I'm working on right now is where the editor, our editor, Ted Shaw, is interviewing. He's taking care of all the guests that come through. Not necessarily the UHD s- system, mm-hmm. but... Affiliated with... Mostly affiliated, like, when we're talking about topics like... Like, uh... That involve politics or school. Yeah, I can't talk about any of that. I don't know anything about that. It's just a new format that, not not mm-hmm. that I don't want to talk about it, but he's just much more knowledgeable in all those type of areas. Yeah, yeah. So, and like I was, like I was telling you before, he's very, like when it comes to those type of things, I'm very, I'm very quiet. Yeah. Like I can offer my opinion on certain things mm-hmm. and other things just don't. Yeah, that's how you get into some heated debacles. Mm-hmm. Like we discussed, uh, we had an episode where we discussed the whole Ferguson case, like in yeah. depth, and that was maybe about thirty minutes. Yeah, my and input on that would be, like, I, I, I would be able to, like you said, give an opinion, but I wouldn't be able to mm-hmm. state facts and statistics. And I really thought about it a lot, and I've been listening to a lot of other podcasts lately. Mm-hmm. And when you really think about it, it's like, it really if it doesn't affect you at all then just it yeah. really doesn't matter yeah but well, if it does it, matter. i mean it does matter not not that <laughs> but it doesn't your matter input but when it doesn't particularly. yeah it really doesn't unless you haven't experienced anything like that mm. and unless you weren't there mm. there's only so much you can say yeah like i can only offer my opinion based on off of what i've read mm-hmm. as far as criminal justice goes mm-hmm. in my classes and other your peop- very specific yeah. experience but if you want to ask somebody you could just like an, if you want an expert opinion then you ask a professor or ask a police officer mm-hmm. who's actually had experience in that yeah because you hear people all the time posting and you've seen it as well on facebook yeah. and twitter and it's just like i'm just gonna unfollow you i'm just gonna yeah. unfriend you because <laughs> or just speaking out of ignorance and speaking yeah. from very mediated yeah. sources and if you don't want to see somebody you don't want to see somebody else's you want to hear somebody else's side and that's very that's very hypocritical mm-hmm. yeah because we uh i mean i have my own opinions on it of course yeah but not yeah. everybody's gonna agree mm-hmm. well i like that i appreciate that you're you're um kind of like divide and conquer mm-hmm. <laughs> the oh yeah and, and i'm taking care of like outside guests mm-hmm. from uhd that you know people For like pure yourself entertainment purposes yeah like pretty me. much i mean we try to keep it <laughs> I try to keep it fifty fifty here. I don't. I don't want yeah, it just exactly. to be like. Yeah, exactly. Like a, if someone's like if it's a really heavy like um, news is never not going to be negative, and there's mm-hmm. never not going to be anything terrible going on in the world. Yeah. Unfortunately, uh-huh. um, this is just a small extension of the of the paper. I mean, here, yeah. Since this is our, you want to also keep it light. Yeah, my original creation. I mean, there's no limits. Yeah. As to who I want to have on. And yeah, everything, so. which is good. I mean, and I rarely. I I've rarely declined any people yeah. to come on. Maybe one or two people. You know who who you are. <laughs> yeah, and and Houston is such a a massive expanse mm-hmm. of people mm-hmm. that the possibilities are endless. It's mm-hmm. it's nice. And I really do want to branch off to doing my own thing later on. So this is a good way to good way to start. You know, just interviewing people from like I was saying yourself from people from UT people from Sam Houston or mm-hmm. just anywhere else in general yeah people that I know yeah that are interesting yeah like yourself oh thanks <laughs> right we just we just keep babbling. flattery will get you everywhere babbling on and on and on and on flatter if anything if you learn anything people from this interview or whatever mm-hmm. this podcast is that flattery will get you everywhere <laughs> anywhere too you just gotta try you just have to flatter <laughs> are there any you just recently started listening to podcasts right not yeah. long ago yeah maybe like less than a year ago okay what are some of the ones that you listen currently listen to um to be honest a lot of the podcasts that i listen to are 
the YouTubers that I watch. Mm, okay. So there's one called Welcome to Our Podcast by Mike Falzone and his girlfriend, whose name I'm going to slaughter. It's like Zoya, so mm-hmm. something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's just them talking about whatevs. They're just funny people. And they're great. They're like a great little couple. Mm-hmm. Um, another one that I listen to is... Um, Adventures in Roomating, which is Ooh. Megan Tonjes, which is like a YouTube musician and amongst other things. She's a YouTube musician, just like a regular musician, touring musician. Mm-hmm. And um, she's she has like a body positive YouTube channel called Life Size Beauty mm-hmm. that she runs, um, which focuses on, yeah, just kind of like body positivity and mm-hmm. esteem. Um, and that's with her and her roommate who live, they both, I think both of them live in LA. Um, and there's just random, yeah, just like talk amongst homies. Mm-hmm. Um, another one that I listen to is Grace Helbig's, who's another big YouTuber. She she has guests over and they play like crazy games. It's like half video, half audio. Mm-hmm. So she'll interview like another YouTube personality or just like a friend or anything. And then she'll have like a challenge, like kind of like, I don't know, like a chubby bunny challenge or like a twist mm-hmm. on the cinnamon challenge. Um, and that'll be posted on her YouTube. I listen to TED Talks a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, interesting stuff. Yeah, I like TED Talks. <coughs> um, I like Radio Lab. I like oh. This American Life. But those mm-hmm. are like I listen to those a little bit more rarely mm-hmm. than the YouTube ones. I like Psycho Babble, which is Tyler Oakley and his friend slash I don't know if they live together. Um, Corey Cool or Cull. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a lot. Of, a lot of them are like like educational ones, some Buddhist ones, um, and a lot of YouTubers. The one that Chris Jericho has is pretty cool, too. Oh, you, you listen to it? I've, I listen to a few episodes. It's like He's a lot funnier than I thought. Really? <laughs> yeah. I'm sure, you know, I've, I've met, and I'm sure people know, I've, I've met him maybe, like, yeah, he's really more cool. than one occasion. <laughs> yeah, I know him and from, like, VH1 countdowns and oh, <laughs> yeah? stuff like that. Oh, he did okay. a lot of cool. that, so. I mean, of course, I've, I've known him for, for much longer from wrestling, obviously, mm-hmm. and that's where I first knew about him. And it's it's very strange how things play out. I mean, I've gotten to meet him maybe. Well, he did music stuff too before, right? Yeah. He, I mean, well, he still does. I just went to go see him last month right at on. the Scout Bar with his band. Yeah. And it's just very strange how things play out. I mean, I've met him maybe, and I'm not bragging, folks. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> hey, <laughs> but you I, meet somebody, you meet somebody. Yeah, You're a I've fan. met. I've gotten to know him for about on like four occasions maybe mm-hmm. five five times yeah that's and cool. the last time that i saw him he was doing a cd signing and is i'm he like a cool guy? oh he's really cool i'm like yeah i'm not sure if you remember me but i i did a i did a review music review for the school paper uh-huh. he's like yeah i remember you and he said my name and everything i'm like oh yeah he does remember oh that's awesome it's <laughs> awesome yeah but yeah he he's a uh, Another person like yourself and like many people that I've interviewed before, it's just mm-hmm. he's not just the guy from wrestling. He's not just the yeah, guy exactly. that has his own band. He's been on Dancing with the Stars. He has his own podcast. Right. He has his own comedy show on online. I think yeah, on YouTube. he did comedy too. Yeah, yeah. It's it's. I like <coughs> listening to podcasts just because it gives you. Oh, the Nerdist. Oh, that's another great podcast. Mm-hmm. I love Nerdist. Um, yeah, it gives you a sense, a more of a sense of the people that you watch whether they're like a celebrity like Mm -hmm. chris chris jericho or whatever um or like a youtube celebrity it just gives you a little bit more dimension to the person which i think is something that's Mm -hmm. important to have in general Mm -hmm. you don't put people up on a pedestal just because they're celebrities i've really learned that a lot about people people that start have started their own podcast in the last couple years Mm -hmm. people like stone cold Yes, he does. I'm subscribed to that one, but I haven't <laughs> listened to an episode. I'm kind of yes. afraid. What is? What does he have? What are his opinions? Oh, you'd you'd be you what wouldn't happens, be surprised. <laughs> what happens in his brain? Oh man, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. He's um, he has his own ranch here in Texas. Really? It's maybe I think it's like in the middle of Texas, like right in the middle. That's awesome. But he's uh, he puts out some really good stuff, and like people like him, people like uh, uh, Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan has an awesome podcast. People might, and we've talked about this before on a His previous podcast. His is mind-blowing. Podcast. <laughs> People might get the perception and be like, hey, he's just a pot-smoking, exactly. whatever. And like, you would never know that from, you like, would, I knew him from Fear Factor. Yeah. Most people probably mm-hmm. know him from Fear mm-hmm. Factor. And he did another show that I don't 
I know him from from uh, from news radio. Oh, okay. Way way back then. Yeah. With uh, I forget the guy's name. With Phil Hartman and uh, what's the other guy's name? Stephen Root, Dave Foley. Yeah. Uh, did you ever watch that show? Mm-mm. No. Very funny show. That was before Fear Factor. Yeah, I'd say this was about late '90s. Oh wow. Right before Phil Hart. No. No. I yeah, was, right before Phil Hartman. I got was killed. a PBS kid, so I was watching oh, okay. I was all of them, like cartoons. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I had a strange childhood <laughs> growing up. <laughs> but, yeah, it was on, and then he went on to do Fear Factor. He was already doing the UFC in the late 90s. Mm. Yeah, he did UFC stuff. Yeah. But, yeah, I, I remember primarily from, from Fear Factor. But I would have never thought that. His podcast is great. That he would, like, be the guy that he is today. Not that he's always been. He's always been that guy. He's o- yeah, exactly, but nobody knew. Well, at least when he hit fear factor and like he blew up mm. i think because i'm i imagine that that's what made him big mm. um nobody would think because he's just the host of fear factor making people eat like cockroaches and stuff and nobody would think that those are his like views on life and like i don't know it's a shame the show got canceled fear factor yeah it's not a shame that stuff was disgusting <laughs> over something that uh, i forget what they they were well now there's add. like american ninja warrior which i think is great and not gross <laughs> <laughs> like it's still like scary mm-hmm. but it's people that are equipped to do stuff like that mm-hmm. yeah a lot of people write him off as oh he's just another uh, guy who smokes pot and i'm like no he does a lot of things he and also lot- smokes pot oh my god he's <laughs> multi-dimensional <laughs> people can do th- other things I don't know. and it's not the the bad stuff it's the good stuff yeah <laughs> but he does i've learned a lot just th- um just a lot uh, just from listening to him yeah. from jujitsu and comedy and just mm-hmm. just anything in general that he science yeah and just life in general All right. do you have any any websites where we can check you out nancy um, i know you, you have your own youtube channel i do have my own youtube channel and i knew you would ask this but yes. I don't want to give it away. <laughs> oh, no, that's fine. Just give away whatever um, you want to give away. And that, I don't know. Like, or If you don't want to give nothing away, that's fine. You can. I mean, I do have stuff, but it's kind of like personal accounts mm. for like friends and stuff. That's fine. Um, no, I don't. <laughs> you can... I'm working on like getting a, a website up. That's another mm-hmm. New Year's resolution. Um, but I guess you can add me on Twitter. I don't know. <laughs> no, that's fine. That's usually that's usually like basically my Instagram. Mm-hmm. Um, but sometimes there's fun stuff on Twitter. Um, that's I think it's like that girl Nancy on Twitter. Twitter for at fun, that girl Nancy. Yeah, for fun rants about stuff, and award season. I'm probably gonna be talking about people's dresses. Oh my god, look at her dress. No. Um, when is that? This Sunday. There's some there's, awards thing there's going a on. bunch there's a bunch of them people's I mean, choice just happened okay. i think the sag awards is coming up and then by the time this airs it would have probably it's happened it's like the already. golden globes uh-huh. golden globes and like the oscars are happening i'm so excited oh okay okay yeah. okay okay if you don't want to give anything away then no. i'll give away we'll give a, i'll give away our stuff <laughs> yeah plug your stuff <laughs> dateline downtown.com slash podcast all the episodes are up there from one to this will probably be number... 1,000. Look, who knows? <laughs> Don't worry about it. Mind your business. You get what you get. <laughs> People are getting a week- weekly podcast now, and it's uh, it's great. Yeah. It's not a lot of work, so that makes it much more fun. Consistency is important. Yeah. They yeah. say that for YouTube. So when you, I imagine it's the same for when podcasts. If I ever do miss a, a, a week where nothing goes up... Can I be a filler? Can I be like filler? Just come in when you have nobody else to talk about. Oh yeah, just talk about movies. Oh absolutely. <laughs> or if you're not phone here, just in. just yeah, just call call over the phone and we can that do something. Cool. The Facebook is Dateline Downtown. Twitter handles at the Dateline. The YouTube channels Dateline Downtown and the website DatelineDowntown.com. Although it always seems kind of redundant, redundant <laughs> that I keep plugging the website, but nevertheless. Nancy, it's been a pleasure to... Thank you so much for having me. Reconnecting once again. Yeah. I think it's been about a year. Yeah. Since we've actually hung out again. But we always get so busy with jobs. Stuff and life. With and school. things. Being multidimensional people. Whoa. But, but, I, away. but I always make time for, <laughs> for friends. So if I don't hear... If you don't hear from me for the next couple of years, then 
Who knows what happened? Oh, no. <laughs> you never made it back to Austin. But thanks again for listening, guys, and I hope you enjoyed this interview, conversation about movies, music, and whatnot. <laughs>